Every year at the Reykjavik Global Forum, we present the Power Together Awards. With this, we honor outstanding global initiatives that inspire people to power together to create positive change in society. This year, the Power Together Award goes to the Pink Ribbon. It was November 1990, 30 years ago, that the Pink Ribbon was used for the first time. And today, the Pink Ribbon is a powerful symbol known everywhere in the world. Wearing it is a strong statement of support for women with breast cancer, be it moral, emotional or financial. And dear guests, two times a year, this beautiful house is lit up in pink. Once in October, during Breast Cancer Awareness Month here in Iceland, and second, during the Reykjavik Global Forum in November. Breast cancer is the most common cancer in women, and the numbers are rising globally. How much support matters, how much community matters, and how much strength one gains when knowing I'm not alone in this, this I experience myself. <clears throat> Sorry. Last year, if it would be for COVID, Hannah could give me a hug. Yeah, <clears throat> I would. But okay. Last year at the Reykjavik Global Forum, I was here and I was wearing a wig, long blonde hair like I used to have. And now I have my own hair back, which is great. Last year, I was in the middle of chemotherapy as I had been diagnosed with breast cancer in September 2019, sorry. We practiced this so much and I, I said I would cry, but um, apologies. So, since September last year, since that diagnosis, my life has changed a lot and every woman who is on that same journey can relate to it. And actually, I think there's probably no woman in the world who does not know at least one other woman who has breast cancer. If it's in her family, among her friends or colleagues, it's really a huge, huge number of women who are having this to deal with this disease. And dear Silvana, uh, I mean, this is just sort of the situation that is around this, the cancer issue, the big C word. And for all of us that care, it's super difficult for me to have to stand here next to my friend and not be able to hug her. But we had talked about that before, that that cannot be done. I hug her every time to, uh, we are other means. So uh, this year, this is a, a really, really important moment in time. And thank you, thank you, Silvana, for sharing. I know that this isn't easy, but it's still so important. And this is what women leaders do. And this is what women around the world do. They share their experience. And this is why the Power Together Awards recipients represent the pink ribbon in 2020. And those that are receiving the awards on behalf of so many women that have been faced with the issue are Nancy G. Brinker and Vigdís Fimbóadóttir. They have demonstrated the power of collective action by channeling breast cancer awareness into a simple and globally used symbol. This establishes a sense of community. It helps to provide access to health services and advance research for a cure. And it's true. I mean, enormous progress has been made because of the tireless work of Nancy Brinker, who raised millions of dollars, and now the survival rates for women with breast cancer are so much better. Thank you, Nancy, and let's have a video about her.
Hello. It's truly an honor to receive the Power to Together Award. Thank you so much for all that you do towards creating positive change in society and throughout the world. While it's disappointing that we cannot be together in person, 2020 has not been without moments of inspiration in the face of seemingly insurmountable challenges. I'm so pleased to join you in celebration of all that can be achieved when we work together. I made a promise to my sister Susie over 40 years ago as she lay dying that I would do everything I could to cure breast cancer. We made an extraordinary impact with Susan G. Coleman, but I knew we were not addressing the whole problem. And over the years, over these 40 years, that is the reason I founded a new organization called the Promise Fund of Florida three years ago. The Promise Fund aims to prevent unnecessary deaths due to disparities uh, in uh, breast and cervical cancer by increasing access to care, early screening, and diagnosis at the largest at-risk population. We believe that this can be done by reaching out through navigators, trained navigators to bring people to care, and we can't wait for them to come to us. We must go to them. I believe the Promise Fund of Florida will become a model that can be replicated in any community, a gold standard model um, throughout the country, throughout the world, community by community. In the words of my great hero, Mary Curie, one never notices what has been done. One only sees what remains to be done. And what remains to be done is much work to apply what we know after all of these years of research in cancer, to apply what we know to those less fortunate and under-resourced people. It's the only way I've been able to fulfill the promise I made to my sister fully and completely. Thank you very much for this very exciting award and appreciation for the work done over these last four decades. We thank Nancy and we sent her like we need to do to Silvana, a virtual hug in this strange time. But also we are honored uh, to make sure that Vigdis, the former president of Iceland and the protector of this Reykjavik Global Forum as he has been for the past four years. And Vigdis was one of these courageous women that used their fortune and their power to talk about their own story and take away the stigma. Vigdís had had a mastectomy before she ran for president of Iceland in 1980. And in a TV interview while running for president, a journalist asked her whether it would be unhindered in her role as a president to have only one breast. To which Vigdís replied brilliantly, well, I never intended on breastfeeding the nation. Victus would have loved to be here with us. Um, she is here in Reykjavik, but of course she is 90 plus years old. And her daughter said she does not want her to come to Harper because of COVID. And so we just want to send her our congratulations and our admiration through, um, through these cameras and let her know that we are so, so honored that and proud that she did what she did and helping so many women with her actions. Yet another virtual hug to a great woman leader and let's close this award ceremony with a song of hope and community. I think we first see a, sorry, first see a video on, on Victis, no? Of course, of course. We first have our video on Victis and then we will have close with a song of hope and community. But of course, that's precisely what our former president represents. We are very forward thinking, I think, when we come to equal rights. We are, of course, one of the Nordic countries, and the Nordic countries have been considered very advanced in equal rights. Being a woman in, in the arts and music, it's, it's great to be growing up in an environment where I feel like um, my potential are, are seen, and I'm given the same opportunities as, as boys are. Women in Iceland uh, decided to take a day off, and it became world known because they proved when they walked out from institutions and everywhere, from the homes even, that uh, uh, women are pillars of society as well as men. It's a very sad thing that somehow uh, society has managed to pay men better than women. Mm -hmm. And we know that it is done by labeling the work of men 
differently from the work of women. And that is now what women are trying to correct yeah. by working out again. There's a lot of things that have changed, probably. <laughs> it's it's uh, first and foremost the emancipation of women. There were only two, three women in the parliament for over 70 years. Mm. But now the miracle is that half of the members of parliament are women today. And that is remarkable. It is not considered totally shocking that a woman could be president or, or, or something like that. It's, you know, it is so empowering. What I've been trying to say to women is get educated, get educated, if you possibly can. Yes, definitely. And not to, to be afraid of speaking up and talking about the issue and trying to be educated and, and having a discussion with other women, trying to figure out like how you can better better your community and your society. Uh, because through reading, uh, they get information, and uh, through information, they learn how to handle things in their societies. I feel very fortunate growing up here and being a woman from Iceland and having these opportunities. There is no doubt that Iceland can be a role model for equal rights in the world. And we want to thank Vigdís, especially for her leadership and for having this conversation with the lead singer of, of Monsters and Men, where they are talking about, of course, gender equality. I would again like to extend the great wishes that we received from Vigdís uh, that is always with us in mind, uh, and we center our best wishes.